Hello, this is part three of the uh, series dealing with electric machines fundamentals. And in this part, we introduce the concept of rotating magnetic field. And all what I'm assuming that you know is that when we have a coil, when the current is going in, coming out, this coil carrying current will produce a magnetic field. We can determine the direction of the magnetic field using the right hand rule. So the magnetic field during to the current shown in this red coil will be in the direction shown. And I'm assuming here that this current has a value, uh, say, 2 ampere. Now we are going to introduce another coil, the yellow coil. I don't think it's very clear, but you can see the X current going in, current coming out. You apply the right hand rule, the direction of the magnetic field will be in like that, pointing downwards. But I'm going to assume that the current in this yellow coil is half that of the red. So if the, if the red current was 2 amp, the yellow current is 1 amp. So I'll end up with this uh, value of the magnetic field. Then we add a third coil, the blue coil. The blue coil, current in, current out. So clearly the flux due to this current in, out, during, uh, applying the right hand rule will be in this direction. The current magnitude again is the same like the yellow, half the red. It will give this blue magnetic field. The resultant magnetic field due to this combination of three coils which are displaced in space is to add the red plus the yellow plus the blue. You end up with this resultant magnetic field. Now we consider a case when the current values have changed. Now remember that position in space will remain the same, the current values will change. And this is demonstrated here. The red current now will be 1 amp, so that's the flux due to the red current, which is 1 amp. The, yellow, the blue current is still 1 amp, yeah, so that's the direction. But the yellow current increased to 2 amps, so that's the yellow field, twice the length of either blue or red. Add these three vectors together, you end up with the resultant component. You can see now that the resultant component has moved. It was at theta equals zero, now it moved clockwise to this position as a result of the changes of the magnitude of the excitation current in the three coil. This can be illustrated uh, in the next slide with some animation. And here you can see the three coils, that's the red, the blue, and the yellow. First of all, a theta equals zero. The blue and yellow currents are equal and in one direction. So that's the yellow and the blue, the blue and yellow fields are equal in magnitude. The red current is twice the magnitude, so it's that. Add the three vectors together, you end up with the resultant magnetic field. What is shown here in the solid lines is the effective, I mean, this combination of currents, the blue and the yellow act like a coil, although actually they are coil sides belonging to different coils, they act because the current is the same. So that's current in, current out produces field in this direction. Red current in, current out produces again horizontal direction. And then here the yellow current in, the blue current out, which are equal in magnitude, that will produce again field in this direction. So at theta or omega t equals zero, the current values are as shown, the distribution shown, and the resultant field is horizontal. Now, we allow 
the uh, time to progress and the currents to change here and see what happens. At this position, this is 30 degrees, this position here, you can see that the blue current is zero. Yes, the blue current is zero and there is no magnetic field due to the blue winding. The red is this value, the yellow is the other value in different direction. So the red and yellow produce magnetic fields which are equal. Add them up, you end up with the black resultant magnetic field. It moved in space. If we move on another 30 degrees, we reach the situation shown here at omega t equals 60 electrical degrees. The red and blue currents are the same value and you get the red and blue will produce magnetic fields that are equal. The yellow is twice the magnitude and you get add the three vectors up, you get the resultant field. Note now that the current in the blue coil has reverse direction. The blue coil, when we started, it was in, out, and the blue field was going upwards. Well, going at opposite to what's shown now. So I will keep this animation uh, running and you can observe it and you can pause the recording at any uh, point to check that the values of the current from the sinusoidal distribution of the current uh, matches what you expect to see uh, in the distribution of the field. So I'll keep it running now. You can check that when the current in any coil reaches zero, the result, the field produced by that particular coil will vanish. And after that, you will see that the direction of the field will reverse for that coil. All the time, when you add the three magnetic fields together, you end up with a rotating resultant component, the black component here that is rotating in space. Of course, all this can be proven mathematically. And what we're giving here is IA is, these are uh, just mathematical representation of the figure shown in the previous slide. This is the magnetomotive force for each current. And then you add them together and bearing in mind that the magnetomotive force are also displaced in space with, re with respect to each other by 120 degrees or uh, 2 pi over 3. You end up, when you add and simplify and use all the relevant equation, you end up with the resultant field that is equal to one and a half the peak of any of the individual phase or winding uh, fields and it's rotating at a speed uh, omega that's actually electrical uh, radian per seconds so all what i want you to know for now is that if i have a three phase winding displaced by uh, 120 degrees in space, excited with three phase balanced voltages, V1, V2, V3, and they are equal and again 120 degrees electrical between them. This plus that 
will give me a field that is rotating with a speed omega equals 2 pi f and that's electric radian per second the relationship between electric or electrical degrees uh, and the mechanical degrees mechanical degrees is actually what you measure degrees is that the electrical degrees is multiplied by the pole pairs the number of the pole pairs of any device I will use 2p equals number of poles so p will be pole pairs that's the notation I'm following in all this presentation and all the course so if omega electrical is uh, 2 by f then you can easily find that the synchronous this is omega s and then you will can find that uh, the rotational speed in revs per minute we call it synchronous speed is 60 f over p where p is, are the pool pairs if you forget and this is revs per minute if you forget is it some book says 120 f over p why their notation here is this number of poles not pole pairs so if you forget or get confused remember something 50 hertz four poles gives a synchronous speed of 1500 revs per minute so 60 multiplied by 50 is 300 four poles so that's two pole pairs uh, divided by two is 1500 so that's all what i want you to remember and this will be my starting point when we start the uh, the presentation or the lecture on the induction motor i will start with having a three-phase winding balanced three-phase winding supplied by a balanced three-phase supply their effect is to produce a rotating magnetic field from then on we'll just forget about all this and we will look at the effect of this magnetic field so i'll see you next time